Welcome back to the eighth edition of the RCA Training Tip Show, where every Wednesday Aussie time, I'm gonna be your YouTube road cycling coach and host of the show, Cam Nichols. This video today is actually part two of a video I published in October last year called The Number One Mistake Cyclists Make in Criterium Racing. So joining me again in this video today is a man that rode professionally overseas for a number of years and a man that became one of the most highly regarded Criterium racers in Australia in recent years, Tommy Nankervis. While the title of this video is a little extreme and bold, I am actually quoting Tommy Nankervis himself, who has a very strong opinion on this topic, and I think it's fantastic to have someone at his level provide a strong point of view on something that I was personally confused about when I first got into Criterium Racing many years ago. You see, Tommy has a proper background in cycling. There's a family history there. He started off on the track as a junior and he's been racing overseas professionally and locally in the Criterium scene for many, many years. Myself, I started Criterium Racing in my late 20s after a stint at triathlons. And when I first started crit racing, I knew absolutely nothing. However, I made my way to B grade, which is the equivalent of category two for all my US friends rather quickly. And that was the first time I saw guys wearing the same kit and working for each other. And that was the first time I witnessed what we're gonna be talking about today. You see, I wish I'd seen a video like this or spoken to a man like Tommy before I started Criterium Racing. So I would know whether what you're gonna to see today was right or wrong. I actually remember in B grade getting into some verbal altercations with some guys on this topic because to me it just seemed unfair. However, I didn't know whether I was right or I was wrong. Turns out I was right. While you don't get fined or disqualified, and obviously it's hard to prove, most commissaires absolutely hate it as it's negative racing. So before we hear Tommy talk about this topic while watching, a Glenvale A grade criterium in Melbourne, Australia. I just wanted to let people know that Tommy and his business partner, Jeremy Hunt, who's an ex sky rider, have just launched an online training system or platform called Formfinder, which essentially enables road cyclists to get premium one on one coaching for a fraction of the price it would normally cost. Formfinder are also offering the first 30 days for free. So I'll provide a link below, and I'll also provide another link to my free ebook for road cyclists out there looking to take their performance to the next level. So let's get into the video. So can you see him up the road here? Yep. If that's your group, yeah. Pretty yep. big bunch. What is it, six or seven of them? Yep. One guy just getting dropped. See, so that's kind of annoying there because you've gone around the corner. There's clearly enough room for both of you two to cross over and these two have got a gap. Mm. So for whatever reason, someone's let the wheel go. If they're letting the wheel go just to be tactical, then that would really give me give me frustration. Yeah, why is that? <laughs> oh, you, 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 you can't get in the way and slow people down. You can sit at the back if you don't want to contribute to a chase. Yep. Sit in the last five wheels. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, it's on you to maintain the momentum of the bunch, as we talked about before. Yep. You just can't. It's just... You know, if Team Sky riding the front with Geraint Thomas in the yellow jersey sitting in seventh wheel, do you see anyone from the rival teams come up and ride into fourth wheel and then lose the wheel on a corner and no make the last guys chase? It's just it's just doesn't happen. It's the height of you know doping's more ethical than doing that, if you ask me. <laughs> it's just it's the most pathetic <laughs> pathetic thing that you can ever do. In it's like it's like when you t you know if you're playing footy and you opponent's doing his shoelace up and you go up and knock him over it's kind of that's how annoying it is yeah and that's a fair call so basically yeah. if, if somebody is if someone know, goes it, around the corner and deliberately slows the pace when there's people up the road in, you know deliberately there's people chasing yep like anyone from any team if someone from my team did it i'd go have a go at them yeah right i just hate it it's just the it's just the worst bad sportsmanship it's, yeah it's the <laughs> it's so bad yeah so for, for those people that do have a made up the road or a teammate like they, they just go and sit in the back third if they're not going to do yeah, it exactly yeah. back yep. third yeah yep and if like that situation with you before where you were stuck caught out yep contribute to that kind of closing a gap yep no worries that's good but you still see that a fair bit in crits, yeah. Um, in the local scene, like even in A grade, you know, people jumping on the front and purposely. Oh yeah, I hate it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was funny because a couple of years ago at Sandown, these 
bunch of flogs rocked up and they were doing that. They had one guy in the break of like 11 or 10 Yeah. after like two laps. And they all went to the front and they started blocking. And I said, get out the way or I'm going to run you off the road. <laughs> and they kept, they kept doing it. And yeah. one guy's like, oh, you want to fight? You want to fight? And I'm like, whatever, dude. Like, <laughs> You just don't oh, do yeah, it. I just, yeah. And yeah. Then, then the next lap, his mate get dropped out of the break. So then they've right. got no one in the break. And, been, and then and I'm silly. like, okay, now, seeing as you contributed to making that back gap bigger than it was, it's time for your team to get on the front and close <laughs> the ba- break. <laughs> you know, swearing at me and all this. I'm like, if you don't know how racing goes, don't try and tell, like, I think I'm proven to understanding races yeah. and how racing goes. Like, if I, usually I'm saying something constructively and if guys want to arc up at me, I'll, you know, just return fire. But... If you've got no idea what you're talking about, don't try and tell someone who's experienced how things work. It's like, you know, I'm going to tell you how to do a vlog or, you know, <laughs> I, don't go, I don't go tell people who are good at other sport, you know. I love playing golf. I don't tell anyone how to do anything in golf. I just ask lots of questions. Yeah. You know, you just got to. So, is there a bit, there's a bit of a culture of it though, isn't there? That yeah, there somehow... is. I don't know how when it I yeah. remember when I first started doing crits, the first year I started like being able to win them and stuff. Yeah. And there was just one team and they used to come down and block. And I'm like, you guys are so pathetic, man. Like, It happens on the... I did a track race a few years ago and they were doing it on the track as well. I'm like... Oh, it, right. So, it's always sort of been around. Well, yeah, but... The, no, it hasn't always been around because right. when I started, when everyone used to use 32 spoke wheels, the average speeds were about the same as they are now. Yeah, right. So, everyone used to... You used to go from first wheel, you'd do your turn and you'd come back in in about 40th wheel or 50th wheel. Yeah. There might be, you know, five or 10 guys who had who were just, you know, going to count how many minutes they could last in A grade. But then you just, you know, after, you used to just count how many turns you could do and that usually decided how long you'd been in the race. So, like, you did three turns and you were in there 15 minutes. Yeah, right. You know, next week you're going to try and do five turns and then it means you get, like, 20-something minutes, you know. And now, like, look at all this equipment. Look at all these bikes. Like, everyone is on a bike capable of riding the Tour de France. They've got the best equipment that's getting around. Except Damo there. He's got an LA. Yeah. I'm on an LA as well, but aluminium. And but the speeds they haven't really gone up that much. You know, I, yeah. I I never I wasn't old enough to have done like the Carnegie handicaps and stuff. But Tiggs and Dino and them they used to ride around in scratch and they'd get, you know average 48, 49, 50 k's an hour for a hundred k handicap. Yeah, right. Interesting. There's no way known that the scratch bunch would be able to do that anymore. For starters, there wouldn't be as big a field. But people just don't think. Let's go as hard as we can until we can't go any further. Mm. They just think, oh, I'm just going to sit back, or I just uh, the blocking thing. Like I'm, I'm going on and on, but it, not only does it slow the whole field down and ruin things for everyone else in the race, but the people who are doing the blocking are, are losing form and condition as well. You know, like you, it's still equally hard an effort, but instead of your effort being at 50 k's an hour your attempt to slow the field down, you're probably doing the same heart rate, but you're doing it 46k now. It just makes you sluggish. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, you're not doing yourself any favours. Yeah. From a personal point and as well, you just... And a sportsmanship. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I, kinda, I think there's a number of factors, but it's yeah. good that you raise that point because I, 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 I think a lot of people that come into criterium racing, and I certainly did when I first started, before I got told... Um, yeah. That it's okay because they see other people do it and they yeah. think, oh, I need to get in a team so I can act like that. Yeah. So I can block my mate and let him go up the road. So they just do it. Yeah, but, what but, fun is that? Oh, look what I did today. I slowed field down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. congratulations on being in A grade. Yeah. And you've got a bright future. And they're next stop Tour de France. <laughs> <laughs> and essentially, they're being educated on what they're saying, right? They're saying something. Yeah, they're, yeah they're exactly. Saying, they're seeing some guys in some good looking kits up the front with teams and they think, oh, that's the way you do it. As opposed to really sp- sitting down and speaking with somebody you know like yourself who's been um, doing it for a long time and understanding that it's not okay.